Good evening. Welcome to our Sunday evening Old Testament studies. If you're following along with us, we're in the 18th chapter of Genesis tonight, the story of Abraham. And he's still operating on the promises of God. In his case, God's promised him a son. He's an old man. It ain't happened. And, uh, it's kind of a test. I guess Abraham's got to get to the point where he realizes that, hey, this ain't me and it ain't Sarah, that this is entirely up to God. All right, let's get started here. The first verse, chapter 18. The Lord appeared to him, Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. So here was a hot day on the plains of Mamre. Abraham, he separated from his nephew Lot, who pitched his tent toward Sodom. Abraham sitting over this old hot day, and he's just sitting in the tent door, and he looks out, and he sees three Men is first going to be called in our scripture here tonight. And then we're going to go on. We're going to find out those three men. I'm going to give you a little glimpse into the future here of the text. And those three men turn out to be two angels and the Lord himself. And the Lord himself means that it was the pre-incarnate or Christ before Bethlehem, before his incarnation. All those places in the Old Testament where you see God, that was Jesus stepping into time back in that day, the pre-incarnate Christ, because that harmonizes what John tells us in his first chapter, that no man hath seen God at any time. He's the invisible God. But John says, but the only begotten Son, he's declared or revealed him to us. So these Old Testament appearances of the Lord is the, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. So, Abram sitting in his tent door in the heat of the day, verse 2, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and he bowed himself toward the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I've found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. He's going to be very hospitable to them here. He says, Let me get a little water, and I'll, I pray you be fetched. And and wash your feet, the custom of the day before you go into somebody's home, you know, you'd wash your feet wearing sandals out in the dust and, and uh, refresh yourselves under the tree. Nothing like good old shade tree on a hot summer's day. And I'll get you something to eat. He's going to say, I'll fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, you'll, after that you'll pass on. For therefore, you're come to your servant. And they said, okay, do as you've said. And Abram hastened into the tent to Sarah. And he said, honey, fix some supper quick. We've got guests here, got friends. Let's get them something good. He says, uh, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal and knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. His bread's what she's going to make, uh, much like our cornbread meal and water. Or in the earlier days, sometimes they called it hoe cakes because hoes were bigger back then a century or so ago and a lot of times travelers in the wagon trains and stuff, they could mix up what we'd call a little bit of cornbread and they'd put it on the hoe and hold the hoe over the fire until it got done and, and make a quick meal that way. But she says, make, make some cakes upon the hearth. Kind of feel sorry for old Sarah having to cook over the fire on a hot day like this where the men are just laying around in the shade. At you. And Abraham, though he's busy, though he ran to the herd and the, Verse 7, and, and he fetched a calf, tender and good. So he's not going to just feed him some bread. He says, we want to make some uh, steaks for him too. And he, he gave it to a young man, it would be the butcher, and he hasted to dress it. And he took some butter and some milk. That'd go good, that hot bread and steak. And the calf which he had dressed, and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. Now, I told you a little bit of the future here that we're going to find out these are two angels and the Lord. And mark that down. That's, that's, that's a little blessing to me in the Bible. It says, it's two angels and the Lord. And guess what they did? They sat down and they did eat. Somebody says, uh, are we going to get to eat when we get to heaven? Well, I know from the Bible we find angels eating on more than one occasion. We're going to find them again in the next chapter down here having them feast with the old Lot in downtown Sodom. And... Food is good, and God gave it to us, and it's a great blessing to me. And if I enjoy eating that much down here, I don't think God's going to take that pleasure away when we get to heaven. Just don't have to worry about eating too much calories or anything up there because uh, it won't be tainted by the curse and everything. We can eat what we want, and it'll be for pleasure, I think, more than necessity when we get there. But here we find these angels and the Lord eating in verse 9. 
And they said to him, Where's Sarah, your wife? Every time the Lord met Abram, it seems like after that uh, Hagar thing, remember he, he called Sarah your wife because Hagar wasn't his wife. And they said to Abram, Where's Sarah, your wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, this is one of them travelers now, one of them three men. It says, says, I will certainly return unto this. Talking like the Lord now, see. I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Guess it'd be after nine months, I guess. And lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abram and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it seems to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. So she laughed to herself, just within herself. Said, After I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord answered. See, now we're getting that revealing who that man was, one of them three men. And the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Why'd she laugh? saying, Shall I of surety bear a child which am old? And the Lord goes on and says to Abram, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, I want to ask you that question tonight. Whatever your problem, whatever you're dealing with in life, maybe seeming to you like it's insurmountable, but is anything too hard for the Lord Lord Jesus himself over in the gospel said, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. There's his good word for today. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I'll return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied. She told a fib to the Lord here. <laughs> she said, I didn't laugh. I laughed not, for she was afraid. But the Lord said back to her, Nay, but thou did laugh. Now, we find out later on, you know what the name of this little boy is going to be when he comes? His name's going to be called Isaac. And the Lord tells him to name him that. And Isaac in Hebrew means laughter. So every time when that little boy was growing up and Sarah stuck her head outside the tent door and said, Isaac, for whatever reason, call him for supper, what else? She was reminded that she laughed. And she heard God's promise to her. And the men rose up, verse 16, from thence, and they looked toward Sodom. Now that's where they're going. They're going to that big city over there where Lot's at. And there's a lot of wickedness going on over there in Sodom. And they're going over there. They're going to judge it, but they're going to inspect everything. Except, and mainly why they're going, maybe the only reason, because God knows what's going on. He don't have to walk through the town and find out. But they're going to get Lot and his family out of there before they destroy it. Because Lot and his family... With all the problems they've got, at least they're believers. So the men rose up, looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. He's escorting them a little ways toward the town. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him? I better let him in on this, the Lord says. For Verse 19, the Lord says, For I know him. He's one of them. I say, if you belong to God, God knows you too. Now, he knows everybody, but he knows his own in the free pardon of sin. For I know him that he'll command his children and his household after him. They'll keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, which, by the way, you can't have justice without judgment being a part of it, that the Lord may bring upon him, upon Abraham, that which he's spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Uh, there's great sin going on because their sin is very grievous. Because of that, verse 21, the Lord says, I'll go down now and see whether they've done all together according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. If not, I'll know. And the men turned their faces from thence, and they went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now, Abraham's going to do something right here. He's going to try to intercede for them people over there. He thinks, well, I don't want to see all them people wiped out. So Abraham's going to try to be an intercessor and, and convince the Lord. With, you know, maybe we can save some of them, Lord. 
And Abraham, verse 23, Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? See, God, you don't want to destroy the righteous people along with the wicked people, do you? Peradventure there be 50 people there, Lord, 50 righteous within that city. Will you also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this matter, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Abraham's telling God this. And the Lord said, okay. <laughs> the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I'll spare the place for their sakes. I'll spare the whole place if I can find 50 people in there righteous. Abraham. Now, what Abraham didn't realize is, I'll give you some sage advice here. If somebody's got inside information that you don't have, it ain't good to deal with them because they're going to beat you every time. And the Lord knew already exactly how many righteous people was in that city over there. And I think it's just four, them four believers, Lot and his wife and his two daughters here. And they had a lot of problems themselves, we're going to find out. But they were believers and they were declared righteous by faith. So Abram answered, he got the Lord down to the degree and said, say, 50, I won't destroy it. So verse 27, Abram answered and said, Behold, now I've taken upon me to speak to the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure they'll lack five of the 50. How about 45, Lord? If we can find 45, we spare it. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of that five? And he said, the Lord said, If I find there 45, I'll not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, See, boy, well, Abraham, he's a wheeler and a dealer, ain't he? He's dealing with the Lord here. He starts out at 50 and he, he gets him to go to 45. Then he says, uh, Well, peradventure there be 40 found there. And the Lord said, I'll not do it for 40's sake. And Abram, Abraham says, verse 30, he said unto him, You know, this is walking on the thin ice here, so to speak. And he says, No. Now let not the Lord be angry, and I'll speak. Peradventure there be 30 found there. And the Lord said, I'll not do it if I find 30 there. And Abram's still pushing his luck, so to speak, and he says, Behold now, I've taken upon me to speak to the Lord. Peradventure there be 20 found there. And he said, I'll not destroy it for 20's sake. And Abraham said, oh, no, don't let the Lord be angry. And I'll speak uh, yet but this once, peradventure, 10. <laughs> we started at 50, we're down to 10. It's like a reverse auction. <laughs> peradventure, 10 will be found there. The Lord said, I'll not destroy it for 10's sake. And the Lord went his way. See, the Lord knew how many was there already. Abraham didn't get him down to four. <laughs> as soon as he had left commanding Abraham, and Abram returned to his place. I bet old Abram went back over there and sat down in that hot tent door, smiling, think I've spared that city. Abraham probably thought there's 10 righteous people in there. But the Lord's going to say, Abram, they ain't but four, and I'm going to get them out of there before I wipe it out. We'll see you next week, and it'll be the judgment upon that wicked city, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. See you next week.